Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first of just two videos aimed at those of you that are interested in 3D printing but maybe you've either tried it and had a bad experience or just kind of want to cut through all the rubbish and just find out exactly what you need to know in order to get hold of the printer and get your first successful prints off it. My idea with this little mini series is in just two videos you can get everything you need to know in order for this to work. Now, as somebody that's into radio control, these kind of things are fantastically useful. But once you get one, you'll find that there's all kinds of things that you can build and make and put on this stuff. There's lots of designs that you can download from places like Thingiverse. It's relatively easy once you put a little bit of time and effort into learning how to use one of the various design programs to design and print your own part. And the big benefit with 3D printing, of course, is that one, the part is in plastic, which can usually be a little bit more robust than making out something like balsa or something else. And the other thing is, if it breaks, it's no big deal. You just print another one. Now, the printer behind me, this is a Malian M200. I have a number of 3D printers in here, but I like to have a little printer that's quite small and compact that can just be set up and sit on a tabletop because I'm 3D printing and designing and playing around all the time. And being able to very quickly get a print out of a printer like that is really handy. And you'll find that those bigger printers that you tend to see, things like the Ender 3s, things like the Mizar S's from GTEC, those bigger printers, I've got those, but you know what? I don't really use them because they're so big, they can't be left out. They have to be pulled out and then just check the calibration before you do your print. And invariably, 99% of everything that I ever want to print will actually fit on a little print bed. So I'm not saying that this is the printer you absolutely need to buy. This just happens to be the one that I have chosen, but I'm going to use it to go through this particular series. I'm going to put time codes down below for all of this, but let's first very quickly talk about why I chose this particular printer. Well, I am interested to see how good a £130 printer is, and this one came from Amazon. I'll put a link down below if you're interested. Cheaper printers tend to have less functionality. They don't have things like automated bed leveling, but modern basic 3D printers are still fantastically capable and so much better than the kind of things that I was looking at even three and four years ago. Now the one that's behind me is available under lots of different names and it's been around for quite a while and that is great because it means that everybody out there in the community has had a chance to tinker and play and to figure out what's going on. So if you have a problem then you can absolutely get help. However the reason I'm making this is because it probably took me all of 30 minutes from unpacking it to getting it working and doing its first print. And I'm going to show you each individual step as part of that. I like simple printers. Now you can spend an awful lot more money and they will do things like auto bed leveling and there's lots of very clever stuff inside. However, they're going to cost two, three, four, five, six times what that thing behind me does. And if you just want to try 3D printing, it's hard to justify a four to 600 pound printer, where for 130 pounds for the printer behind me and 30 pounds for a roll of decent plastic, you can be set up only working great. There are only two things I would recommend for something like this. Do think about the size of the printer. You, ideally, you want it somewhere that it can be set up and left set up. And secondly, I would recommend getting one with a heated bed. That means that the actual plate that the 3D print is printed onto can be warmed up as well. Now this is called an FDM printer and what it does it deposits material layer by layer and basically just by melting plastic filament and it eventually creates the thing that you're after. There are other kinds of printers around like resin and others but as a new person to 3D printing I wouldn't recommend going near those. So very quickly how does a 3D printer work? Well if you've ever used a hot glue gun you've pretty much seen the principle in action. What it does is it melts a filament and that filament then, that plastic becomes uh, liquid or very, or, or like a runny honey. And then it actually very carefully lays that down. Now, how does it know where to do that? Well, what you do is you use something called a slicer, which is a little program. And we'll do that in the next video. We'll go through and create our first print. And what that does is you import the model that you're interested in. And then that slices it into very, very thin layers. And then that information is then what the printer uses to draw one layer on top until you eventually get the piece. 
Let's talk about a couple of names of things. So the actual file that the printer will run to print this thing is called G-Code, but don't worry about that. You don't have to know about G-Code in order for this to work. You don't have to go anywhere near that because it's all done by the applications. And the applications, the slicers, there's lots of various versions around. I here have been using Cura, C-U-R-A. And again, we'll actually download and use that in the next video to do our first print. So how do you get from a file on your computer that you've downloaded from Thingiverse to a plastic piece that's come off the printer? There's only a handful of steps. And again, I'm going to show all of them in the next video. But just to kind of set the scene, what you do is you get hold of the file that you want to print. You then import it into the slicer and then you select the machine and the kind of plastic that you want it to be printed along with some other settings how much the infill is because you don't typically tend to print them completely solid you can have the inside be like a honeycomb that makes it lighter but also saves on plastic too once you've got everything set you then save that g code down onto i tend to use the sd card and then put the sd card in the printer fire up the printer select that g code file on the SD card, hit print, and away you go. So it isn't particularly complicated, so long as there is a good setup in your slicer like Cura, and the printer is calibrated well, you should be ready to go. One of the things that can be a little overwhelming for new people coming into 3D printing is all the different filaments that are available, the plastics that you can actually print with your printer. Now, the kind of printer that we're using for this little series has a heated bed, and that allows you to print slightly more exotic plastics. There are three that you tend to hear about, and I'm going to talk about those here. First is going to be something called PLA. PLA is what you tend to get a sample of, and I did with this printer here. It's very hard plastic, it's quite brittle, it's very easy to print, it melts at a relatively low temperature, and when the part is printed, it's very stiff and firm, but it can also potentially be a bit brittle. So it isn't great for radio control, but it's fantastic for lots of other things. ABS is another one that you'll hear people talk about. ABS is what propellers on things like multi-rotors are made out of. It's a very robust plastic. However, it's an awful lot harder to print. You need much higher temperatures. You also need a heated bed. And the challenge with ABS is that it isn't dimensionally stable when it's heated. That sounds like a lot of gobbledygook, but what it actually means is when you liquefy it, when it's hot enough to become like that snotty runny honey, then it actually increases in volume a little bit. And as it cools, it then contracts and gets smaller. And what can happen is that means that as you print layer on layer, the top layers actually pull the sides of the print off the bed, which is very common with ABS. However, I don't tend to use either of those. I will use the supplied PLA to kind of set the printer up. But once it's running, I will tend to use one of two other types of filament. One is PLA Tough. That's actually what we're printing with on the printer right now. PLA Tough is PLA with some added chemicals in that allow it to be a little bit more resilient and less easy to break and I really like it it's still as easy to print as PLA and it still gives you uh, a lot of toughness but it's still quite hard plastic when it's been printed my personal favorite for things in the hobby in particular is something called PETG now PETG is almost as easy to print as PLA but it's almost as tough as ABS so you get the best of both worlds and with a little printer like this M200 that we're using in the series it has a little heated bed which is actually quite handy for that and I would recommend if you're going to be starting to use this stuff get yourself some of the PLA Tough if you're not bothered about it being slightly flexible or if you want it to be slightly flexible and very tough and survive lots of crashes then my recommendation will be something like PETG. Now there are other versions like PLA Lite and other bits and pieces but those are the main ones and I would recommend when you're first starting just use PLA or something like PLA Tough. It's so much easier to print with and then once you gain the confidence you know it's set up then you can maybe go on to some slightly more exotic stuff. There are a number of common things that I tend to see that will stop a printer printing really well and Variably, it's not that the printer is bad, it's something to do with the setup. 
The most common issue that I see are the Cura settings, the settings in that slicer program not being set up perfectly for the printer that you're about to use. Having incorrect settings will cause the printer to print very poorly, maybe extrude too much, too little plastic, move too quickly, too slowly, and there are loads of issues. Now, the reason that I have chosen the M200 is that there's already a profile for that printer in Cura. Because it's been around for a little time, it's easy. I can just select that. And again, next video, I'll show you how to do all of that. Some of the challenges when I have other printers here for review is that because they're new, the manufacturer hasn't done a great job of explaining how to set up the profile in Cura for that printer. And it takes quite a bit of messing around in order to dial the settings in for the printer to work great. Some printers like you to over extrude a little bit so rather than just extrude at the normal 100% level you kind of extrude at 105% level to make the print look good and for a new starter you just don't want to be messing around with that. The next big issue is incorrect bed leveling. Now the bed that the 3D print is printed onto not only has to be the right level from the nozzle it also has to be completely level so as the plastic comes out the nozzle it prints it perfectly. Incorrect bed leveling will cause all kinds of weirdness to happen and with a printer like we have here it is done manually but it's very easy to do and once you've set it you can kind of leave it unless you start taking the printer apart then you would recheck it again. Lots of these printers have usually been tested from the factory. I would never ever assume that because it was tested at the factory it now arrives perfect ready to go. Lots of vibration potentially unwind screws and the, the bits and pieces on a printer. So bed leveling is really, really important. And we're actually gonna look at that in a minute because that is probably the number one issue that will cause a print not to work. And finally, incorrect temperatures for your plastic. If it is too warm, then it's going to string and it's going to be like very hot snot. It's not going to print very well. Too cold, it's not going to adhere to the bed or the previous layers. There is a set temperature that plastics tend to like. The manufacturer or supplier of your plastic will tell you what that temperature should be and five degrees can make all the difference, either plus or minus. So if it isn't sticking very well, increase the temperature by five degrees. If it's starting to leave lots of little strings so it looks like a spider has tried to build a nest in the middle of your 3D print, it's probably too hot. So when you first get your printer, what do you do? Well, obviously you go into unbox the printer and check for damage. The great thing about this is it comes pre-assembled. There is zero stuff that you have to do. There's only one little piece that you have to stick on the side and that's to hold the reel in place. The rest of it is ready out the box. There's no assembly. And I think for somebody that's new to 3D printing, particularly if you don't have a mechanical engineering background, Getting something that works out the box is going to be helpful. Remove any packaging. Uh, with this, there's only one piece of tape that's wrapped around the head to stop it moving in transport. And then just double check that there aren't any extra pieces of foam hidden anywhere that's designed to protect it while it's in transport. Attach any pieces that need to be. And again, the only thing that you attach on here is this little bracket that holds the filament roll on. And then what I would do is I would then making sure that everything is undone, power up the printer, go into the menu, and then just move each axis, both the X, Y, and Z, which is the height, and also the extruder as well. You should see everything moving nice and clearly. It'll be a kind of a humming noise and you'll hear things moving around, but I would do that as step one to make sure that all the stepper motors that drive the three axes and feed the filament are working okay. If any of those tests don't work and it doesn't move, I would stop there before you go any further, contact the person who sold you the printer and let them know there's a fault and you need to return it. Now, assuming that everything has gone perfectly with that so far, so you've unpacked it, all of the servos are moving in the right direction, the next thing to do is to level the bed. Now, on a manual printer like this, it's relatively easy. What you need to do is get yourself a piece of paper. I tend to use something like a sheet from a post-it note that seems to work perfectly for me here and I've been using that method for a very long time and there'll usually be an allen key and in the corner of the bed you will spot that there are these little screws if you turn them clockwise it will lower the bed if you turn them anti-clockwise it will raise the bed so what we'll do is go into the menu on the printer and we know that all of the stepper motors and axes are working okay and we will select home 
and what home will do is it will move the head down into the home position and that should be just over the bed height itself. Now what you might find is that the bottom of the nozzle is just touching the bed and that's typical because in transport the screws with vibration tend to unwind a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the printer off and then by hand we'll just push the bed forward and we'll use the allen key to gently, in this case, lower the bed by turning it in a clockwise direction. Move it about a quarter of a turn at a time, slide it back into position and see if you can slide the piece of paper under the nozzle in between the bed and the nozzle. And you're looking for a little bit of resistance. If you can slide it under and there's a little bit of resistance, so if you tilted the printer up it wouldn't fall out, you're probably at exactly the right height. Once you've done that, I would move the head by hand over to the front side on the other side and repeat the process and then once that's done I would pull the bed forward and do the same thing for the two rear positions again adjusting each screw one by one until you are able to put that piece of paper in between the bed and the nozzle with just a little bit of resistance. So it's kind of catching the paper, but you can still push it under easily. Once you've done that, then I would recommend repeating the process because you'll find that everything's moved very slightly. And then finally, move the head into the middle and just check that it's still at that exact height. It should be, but once you've done that, the bed is leveled and you're ready to print. So join me in the next video where we will download the slicer, we'll get hold of a file to print, and we'll actually go through each individual step. Now the printer is set up and the bed is leveled, all we need to do is load the plastic, get a file on there, and start printing. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.